guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording Friday, October 13th. Uh, and we are fully in the swing of things uh, with preseason, with training camp, with practice, all that good Celtic stuff. Uh, but before we get into Celtics, I do have a couple things that I thought would be, uh, or just that I wanted to mention. I forgot to tell you this, actually, Sam, but I got a mm-hmm. message the other day from somebody on Twitter who, uh, okay. they don't have an actual name, but their message was, hey, man, how are you? I follow How About Them Celtics from Uruguay. Great job. And then he was like talking about potential like contracts and stuff. And then he sent me a, how long was it? He sent me a minute 55, two minute voice memo, just explaining why he likes the podcast. And I just wanted to say, I appreciate you because that's Thank really you. cool. And I will send it to you after this yeah. so you can listen to it. But it was very cool. He, he was basically like, I don't really want to listen to 40 year olds talk about how they wish the game used to be all day. And you guys seem to not well, do, I do that. I appreciate it. Well, you do. But we, <laughs> we have balance. We, but uh, I just want to say I appreciate you for watching and listening from Uruguay. And that was yeah. uh, it was pretty cool to see uh, that uh, just hit my DMs and, and we appreciate you. Um, but yeah, that was cool. Uh, it, it is weird, though, to think that like and we say this all the time. It is weird to think that people actually like listen <laughs> to this because most of the strange. time it just feels like we're talking and then like we put it somewhere like whatever. But then we're we get into like out. yeah, but then we get into like the pre games which have been baller so far. They've been so sick, and then you see the chat moving like wow, wait, there's actually people who like care about the same things we care about and want to listen and like hang out. Like I don't know, I was like reflecting on that the other day. The funny was, thing is, is Jack cool. is like the only person I talk about basketball with, other than my yeah. dad. <laughs> Like, like I, I kind of just don't talk about basketball with anybody else. <laughs> I don't have it in it's me. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. But uh, we, we appreciate you guys allowing us to have this platform to uh, talk about it because uh, we enjoy it very much. But uh, speaking of it, let's actually do some of that. Let's talk about basketball. Uh, I was at Celtics practice today, which, again, is Friday. Just got back. This is going out. Yes, I did just get back. Dude, look at this water. Hold on. Look at this thing. <laughs> that huge. is a giant water. You know what look I'll show it, This is my forearm. This is the water. In spite of uh, the same size, mm-hmm. in spite of uh, Joey Spatchels, who mocked me, I scarfed down some food before this. And you bet your ass it was Jersey. Respect. <laughs> yeah. You know what it had to be. Um, but I got back from Celtics practice. Now we are recording this again on Friday. It's coming out on Sunday, though. So if anything big happened on Saturday, we'll talk about it on the Tuesday pod. Sorry. <laughs> we, mm. uh, we had stuff tomorrow, but got back from Celtics practice and I'm going to kick off within uh, not really a ratless, but I'll ratless myself. So I have not yet asked a question at Celtics practice heading into today. I don't want to step on people's toes. It's not like post-game media where they're like, okay, we'll take turns. Here's a mic. You know when your turn is. It's just yell out your question and and hope you get it in. And I did today. I asked Joe Missoula about Kristaps Porzingis and drop coverage with Derek White and Drew Holiday's trailers, how that dynamic's been, how it's gotten used to. I asked Kristaps about it after the first preseason game, so I'm going to write about it. Finally asked the question voice crack in the middle of the question just it a, just a disaster it was just, it was just i finally got a voice crack like, uh, guy to be honest with you yeah. it happens to me quite not quite a bit but it happens to me probably more than i would like mm-hmm. i almost just had one uh yep. what was joe's reaction did he snicker at you maybe spit on no, you he, no he's just he was normal i bet i could find a video of it of my voice crack if we'd like to watch him <laughs> but uh, do you want do we want to watch the voice crack? if you have it yes if not then don't kill yourself I don't know. You can't hear it. My voice is not picked up by the CLNS audio uh, <clears throat> well enough. But yeah, it was it was just full on like I was like uh, you know KP is really good at drop coverage and then you have Derek White and I'm like mm, <laughs> disaster. Should have just uh, been like you should have just like left. <laughs> yeah, you just, just leave the scrum. <laughs> you walk away and everyone like kind of understands. So like yeah, okay, uh, see you tomorrow. That was bad. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't great, but Joe gave me a good answer. He talked about how it's all about trust. Uh, KP dropping back far enough to trust Derek White and Drew Holiday uh, to contest from behind so he can get those blocks and, and sink deep into the paint. And I do think that's going to make the Celtics drop coverage a lot more effective because you have guys who can uh, defend while trailing and you have probably one of the best drop coverage guys in the league. He's seven foot three. He's a good shot blocker. Like <clears throat> that's enough to do it. See Mikhailu talked as well. Uh, I did ask him a question because I know we talked about on the last pod, maybe when we reacted to the second 76ers game, how Sam Hauser was kind of used as a connector. And so I asked him about like, I phrased it very poorly because I was unprepared, but I was basically asking him like, how do you manage in the game when you shoot versus when you try to drive a closeout? Is it just playing off stars? Like, what is the deal? And he basically was like, yeah, it's like 
you have to know the personnel you're playing with and be able to read the defense. Like if I'm playing with stars, I'm more likely to just catch and shoot. But if I'm playing, you know, more freely, then you have opportunities to to gauge and make decisions for yourself, which makes sense. And I was intrigued by that. Uh, Al Horford also talked <clears throat> talked about Jordan Walsh's relationship with him, just how that's been. Uh, Joe Missoula also talked about. Um, where was it? He he talked about, you know, the team getting together, saying they're happy where they're at, but they they know they need to continue to get better, saying like developing chemistry, the stuff like that. I, I can't remember if there are any other like big highlights from it, but uh, those those are kind of the talking points. Anything you saw on Twitter that I might have missed? I have not been on Twitter today. Admittedly, I really haven't. I, I did most of my digging for the NBA section of this show. So if you like Fair. my the way my brain works, you're going to maybe enjoy <laughs> that section of the show. Um. Hmm. I just I knew you were there. I figured you would fill us in. Yeah, that was, I think those that were the main points. Take. I saw yeah. that Al uh, likes Kristaps. He does. Yes, Al yeah. did talk also about Kristaps and playing with him. Said it's been which good. is good. You worry that they might hate each other sometimes. Yeah, when a new guy comes in, <laughs> guys get territorial and they're like, "I don't want you on my team." But that didn't happen mm. with Kristaps, so it's really good. It good is start. Good. It is good. Al also who took. 20 to 30 minutes to come to talk to us it took so long well the practice ended then we all they're like oh yeah you know christian uh who is a pr guy mentioned oh yeah you get al and we just look across we see al like doing the steps in the in the weight room we're like okay so we're not getting him for a little while (laughs) he's still hanging out um the first thing you should have been like is how many steps you do yeah yeah you know what's the deal uh, I also tweeted out a video of Jordan Wall shooting, and I thought it was free throws, and then I rushed into another thing, and so I tweeted out he was shooting free throws, and I, I got some DMs, uh, some DMs and messages pointing out to me that those aren't free throws. So DMs? Ap- apologies. Yeah, somebody DM me saying, I love your content, but these ain't free throws, bro. I'm like, thanks, man. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. So if you're watching Because I saw you correct you. yourself, and I was like, oh, I corrected myself after him? I got a DM. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, nobody was roasting him. I guess he just caught that. Like, good for <laughs> him. No. <laughs> No, I guess anybody DM. we know is just somebody that no, that, just like, someone just that I, I don't know. His name's Malcolm. He DM me and he goes, uh, he said, uh, I don't want to be hey, an ass, but it's Bozo. technically not free throws. <laughs> yeah, I love your content though. And I was just like, hey, dumbass. Like, right. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. I thought it was fun. I should uh, another, uh, another thing from uh, from practice. I don't know who it was. It looked like the Celtics were working out a player today, though. I don't know what the player's name was. It wasn't the guy. Pull it up. Pull up the picture. We'll go to the review. Oh, yes. Yes. Let me. You did send a picture. It was a very. I was unable to identify. Our Mm -mm. good friend Tyler Rucker was unable Mm -mm. to identify. Maybe we can brainstorm who this may be. Celtics were. Gosh, I, w- I want to pull it up without like exposing Twitter. Maybe we shouldn't Sorry. brainstorm. I don't want to put misinformation out there. Yeah, we don't have come up with this, nonsense. Again, like I said, very great picture I got here. But the Celtics were seemingly working. This out is the uh, new Marshawn Lynch at the airport, or or <laughs> yeah. person X seen at <laughs> airport because it's so blurry. <laughs> You can yeah. see somebody's fat hand on the laptop in the reflection. Is that you? Leave, leave Brian Rob alone. <laughs> You're just roasting B Rob on the program. <laughs> no, it's B Rob. He's I, hard I at work. It. I thought it was funny. Look yeah, at my I man near the, the weight room. He's slumped. Is he supposed to be yeah, security? He's I don't know. He's just hanging out. He's but, not uh, stopping I, no anybody. Idea. If you want to go lift weights, you can get right past him. No idea who this is. It wasn't any of the guys we talked about this summer. It's not uh, Brandon Slater. It's not Jordan Shaquel. Um, It's not, you know, uh, DJ Stewart, Taylor Funk, any of those guys. So it's like we, we don't know who it is. Um, <clears throat> speculation, at least my speculation, probably a potential two-way replacement, I, if I had to guess. They're probably bringing guys it in. It would make sense. Scrub, uh, but we don't know who that is, but he was at practice. Jay Scrub. <laughs> He's doing who, uh, I meant to put this on the sheet, and I did not. So I'm glad you, you mentioned it. Mm-hmm. Jay Scrub tweeted about his, mm-hmm. I don't know, what has happened to him. His injury, yeah. His injury. And he said, be back soon, or we'll be back, I promise you. Or something like that. With a <clears throat> shamrock and a green heart. Now, I was a little bit confused by this, personally, because everybody that we've talked to, the two of us talking back and forth, the assumption is he is no longer going to be on the team. So that made my dumb brain start moving around as I was sitting there doing nothing. And I was like, did they like wink, wink, handshake that he's not going to go away? Like, are they going to keep him around? I inquired. Apparently, you cannot just like retain people in the G League. Not that anyone's going to be rushing to sign Mm -hmm. Jay Scrub as he has a torn ACL. They could probably 
waive him and then sign him to like a G League contract, right? They couldn't like just have him in the G League and like let him be on two way. They could probably like Correct. waive him and bring him back to the main Celtics, which maybe but technically if you're in the G League, you're free. You're a free agent. Yeah. This yeah. I learned yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say Taylor Snow, who's a Celtics guy at practice, we like it was just a topic of conversation. At practice, he was like, yeah, the main guys were super upset. They were super, like, very excited about Jay Scrub. Uh, probably would have been, like, their leading scorer, their best player. Like, they, they, everyone was very high on Jay Scrub, so it sucks that he is uh, not going to be. The main Celtics betters are really struggling now. Yeah, they're tough. Can you even bet Those on G League the games? There's no way you can bet on bet on. You can bet on anything, dude. you got people betting. On, I have a friend that gets up and he bets on, like, Chinese baseball. I was just going to say Danny bets on Korean baseball from time to yeah. time. Yeah. So. Yeah, There's you can that, bet maybe. On anything. I, maybe. Maybe you can't bet on on, on Fanduel. Okay, yeah, CNS. But you know, maybe uh, Joey on the corner will give you a line on the main Red uh, Celtics. True. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, I don't like that they changed the name. You like the main Red Claws better? Just because that's what I'm instinctually inclined I agree. to say. Yeah, I, I'm I'm trying to say Red Claws usually too. This, this um, water is so big. <laughs> so I'm struggling. Uh, another thing that we forgot to put on the sheet that I'll mention quickly because we don't have a ton of Celtic stuff anyways. So Tyrese Maxey was on mm. the JJ Redick podcast. Uh, maybe slights the Celtics or maybe maybe takes dig um, <laughs> at the Celtics. Um, I tweeted it. Let me Let me pull up the tweet. Uh, and you I, tweeted I play... it, you hit me up about it, and I was like, what are you talking about? And you gave me the timestamp, and then the timestamp was different on the YouTube video than it was the yeah. Spotify, but I did find My it. My bad. I and, did and, find it. And I'm not crazy, right? It does sound like he almost You're not crazy. Talking. So let me pull it up. I'll pull yep. it up. So you can Tyrus Maxey is talking about... He here. I wrote it here. Tyrese Maxey was on Old Man of Three. Talked about who he he always wants to get up against a team that passed on him in the 2020 draft. At the very end, he says the following: When JJ Redick is trying to get out of him, what team it was. Uh, and I'll I'll play the clip here so people can hear it. Uh, and you guys can give me your that thoughts. little circles going around like a damn hamster. Yeah. Wheel. If the clip actually does decide to play, talk about shit or not, I will. Uh, I will let you, you know. Mean. Yeah. Right. I'm getting trashed on here it's very um, i've never seen the the new x twitter logo like every uh, time you play oh right. of course here we go james is here playing okay my rookie year bins play okay everybody wants to play when we play this team when we play this up but you, you can kind of hear it they there. De- not only did he say it but they definitely edited him saying it that is not a natural oh oh, oh no that- like somebody cut that I, I, it could have been like when we play this and he's like, oh, uh, my bad, my bad. But like, basically it sounds like he says, especially when you add in the context of everyone wants to get up when we play this team in the context of Philly, it pro- sounds like he, he's well, mad. They need to do a better job of getting up. Aaron, Aaron, yeah, Aaron Smith went 14th to the Celtics that year. Maxie was 21st. It'd be um, kind of crazy if they had Maxie. Yeah, it, it all go back to the same thing though. Like, what do you have gotten the same opportunities? Because I was talking to Bobby Kravitzky about it, and he was like, "Well, at the time they had Smart, they had Kemba. Like, what do you have really gotten that much playing time?" Do so they, let's see. They, they picked. He was what twenty? He was the COVID draft, so he would have came in the league in twenty twenty, twenty one. I would say he would have got opportunity. Well, they drafted Kemba, Pritchard that year too. Didn't oh, they, they did draft Pritchard. Well, he would have got that Pritchard kind of opportunity where Maybe. Pritchard came on as a rookie, and everyone was like. He's good. Pritchard. Like everything you're hearing now about Pritchard is what you were hearing two years ago when he was actually getting time, which is why yeah. none of this should be overly surprising to anybody other than the fact that he's managed to stay sharp while not playing at all. Mm-hmm. So I think Maxi, if he had been drafted by the Celtics in that circumstance, would have got some run. Kemba was out a lot that year. He struggled he to stay in the lineup. Time. He didn't play in the playoffs or he did he? He wasn't, uh, he wasn't active for all five no. of their games he, against Brooklyn. Yes, I think he only played a little bit, but there is that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, it was fun. It was inter- interesting to hear Maxi say that because I, I don't know if he actually said it, but it sounds like he was playing it. Also, interesting enough, J.J. Redick was reading down like, okay, these are the teams you average the most points against. You know who he averages the least amount of points against in his career? <laughs> is it the Celtics? <laughs> it is the Celtics. That would make sense because he might be pressing. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's trying too hard, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Speaking of Celtics lineups and Celtics guards. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's guaranteed. 
Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. It absolutely is. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Zach Lowe uh, said on his podcast he wouldn't be surprised if Drew Holiday off the bench could potentially be a real thing. He said, I don't think this was a one-off, uh, Lowe said, of the Celtics' first preseason games where Drew came off the bench for Derek White. I don't think this was. Uh, let's see how this looks. He may end up starting a ton of games, injuries, nights off, matchups, just being so good that we have to start him. I think this has some legs, potentially, and the reason I think it has legs is because they trotted it out in the first game. They didn't play great, but you could feel the spacing and impact of a real quick trigger center with Por- uh, Porzingis. I think they like Tatum out, uh, Holiday in with Jalen Brown on the floor because like the Curry on the bench minutes in Golden State, Tatum on the bench has been a problem now for a lot of years. I'm not, uh, and then That's this me. is your, yeah, okay, this is Sam's take on it. Uh, but yeah, you, go, go ahead. With your take. Yeah, go, I mean, I've seen this kind of floating around. Obviously, when we saw it happen, we were kind of surprised. We talked about it on the post-game reaction that went up on Monday morning. It was kind of shocking. I, I don't know if they would do this. They just made a major move to bring him here. Why would they do that just to bring him off the he bench? First. Not to say you yeah. can't be valuable off the bench or you can't finish games as a bench player. But I don't even know if he'd be cool with that. It doesn't seem like he's got a ma- massive ego. But somebody that was an all-star last year gets brought in after really not having any kind of dip, any kind of fall off, and you're going to bring him off the bench, I guess. Maybe they're just like, dude, free award. Six men of the year. Brogdon yeah. did it last year. You can be the new Brogdon, then we'll trade you. Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh let's see. I, I like Do you, you said, have thoughts I, on that? I can't imagine they bring him off the bench. That'd be so it just weird. doesn't make any sense. No, I why don't would think they I've... why would they shake up the roster to the amount that they did? Giving up Rob first round picks along with Brogdon if they're just gonna try the, and use him like they use Brogdon. The only reason I could see them doing it is because they spent the entire summer developing continuity with the other five. Like Kristaps got there so much earlier that they spent the whole summer saying, okay, we're going to play two, two, okay. uh, two sure. bigs, one guard and the Jays. That's how we're going to run. And I think it was John Krause talking about this on lockdown or I forget where I heard it, but they were like, the Celtics made this calculated move to get more big man depth because they want to play big because they saw it worked in the final run in the finals run. Like they want to go back to that, but adding Chris Tops instead of Rob's as the double bigs keeps the floor spacing that they liked with the two guards. So now they have the ability to do both. So bringing in Drew Holiday, you could still do that, but then you'd have to send Derek White to the bench. And if you just told him he'd be the starter and not that Derek White would have a problem, like coming off the bench, he seems like the kind of guy would be fine with it. But like, you sent him to the bench. You've ruined that continuity a little bit. And from our conversation with Jake Fisher on the, the last pod, like Celtics really like Derek White. Like they really like him too. So I, I, I could see it, but I couldn't see it. If you know what I'm saying? Like I could see that they would do it, but in my mind, I don't think it makes a ton of sense to do it. I think they should run two guards, send Horford to the bench for continuity's sake, because Horford's going to miss a bunch of game anyways. That said, I think it will be Derek White off the bench, but even that doesn't make sense to me because I don't think Derek White's a bench player. I, I don't. He's too good to be off the bench, in my opinion. So, <clears throat> well, well to see. I mean, we've talked about it many times. His numbers as a bench player are just not as good. The splits mm-hmm. suggest that he should start. If you want the best out of Derek White, it comes in the starting lineup. You've made the point that when he's come off the bench, it hasn't been consistently. So there's always the possibility that he could adjust to that and become very strong off the bench too. But last year, he was world's better as a starter. He had a great season. He averaged like, what, almost 13 points, about four rebounds, four assists, and he Mm -hmm. shot well, and he made all defense. It's tough to relegate him to a bench role. One, after a season like that. Two, after Joe Mazzulla named him the starter back in July, even though Mm -hmm. there have been changes since then, it's still something, like you said, they very well could have been preparing for. So who knows what's going to happen? I'm glad I'm not involved. Yeah, that's a very tough decision. And uh, one that I don't envy Joe Mazzulla for having to make. Uh, You know, it's not a tough decision, though, Sam. Uh, Posting guys that make your players look bad. Yeah, It seems like the Celtics social media team has been making that decision regardless. Obviously, there is the, uh, yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> you like the transition? I was ready. Yeah, a couple weeks ago there was the video that went around posted by the Celtics or somebody in this something got out. Jalen Brown dribbling with his left hand versus his right hand, and it looked like he was <laughs> significantly better with his right hand still. And today, a picture came out of a guy we are very high on who at this point you will have seen a video on uh Nemius yeah, Kata. yesterday's video um <clears throat> mm-hmm. just absolutely posterizing <laughs> Luke Cornett. well technically you don't know you don't know yeah sure sure yeah you don't know right you don't maybe you don't know you i'm finding up. the picture now okay. yeah is it on uh was it the celtics official i, account I quote it? tweeted it so uh okay go i'll go to yours yeah yeah thank you so there's a photograph of Nimi for those listening You'll, you'll get the same treatment once the picture's up. Nimi mm-hmm. going up for a, a big jam over Luke Cornett with both hands up. Now, it does not look like Luke Cornett is going to block this shot. No. Also it's wearing not. long sleeves, as is Derek White. Is Nimi in a hoodie? Mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah. that's besides the point. Celtic Social, officially on watch. Like you said, Jalen Brown, they post him dribbling with his left and struggling. After a summer of everybody tearing his left hand to shreds, people tweeting the video of a a guy on a unicycle dribbling basketballs, and they're like, Jalen Brown should do this to Mm. to get better. Now you have them posting Nemius Kate to dunking on Luke Cornett when for the past week, people have been like, well, Luke Cornett is definitely out and Nemi is in. Mm. be dumb look at, look at joe mazula yeah like, he's oh, like shit. oh well, shit. shit now i have to make a roster decision based on this photograph mike Zarin up there like licking his chops <laughs> this this is Damn. a historic photo that this was the moment when everyone decided that luke Cornett is out of the rotation images that proceed or proceed disaster whatever it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> Derek White almost, looks I, no i I'm in. I'm in on on Nimi though. Nimi is he's so good. He's so good. I'm very excited yeah. for him. But uh, yeah, so it's like social media on fraud watch is uh, the way. I look at it. Big um, time watch. Mm. Speaking of watching, uh, Malcolm Brogdon made his debut for the Portland Trailblazers the other day. Played pretty well. Uh, what do you, what do you finish? Do you have it here? But I'm looking somewhere else. He put up 13 points in 15 minutes off the bench, five seven shooting. Uh, if you're thinking about Robert Williams. He's already hurt. <laughs> He's already Bang hurt. news with somebody. <laughs> yep. Uh, so he did not play in this game. But um, do you think Brogdon is how, – how long is he on that roster, realistically? It's really tough to say, right? Because it doesn't make sense for him to be on the roster. It's the same reason why it didn't make any sense for them to trade for Tyler Hero all summer when everyone was like, you have to take the Heat's offer or else. Because they already have – Anthony Simons. They already have Shady and Sharp. They already have Scoot. These are all players that can play the guard spot. I know they're using Sharp more as a forward, but it doesn't make a ton of sense to have an overload in the guard rotation just yet for Portland. However, I think there's value in it for them to kind of roll with what they have, see what they have, see how good the roster can be because we've talked about it and it's like, well, are they really that bad? And you can't be like, yes, at least not yet. You can't like concretely be like, they suck and should tank. Because the Western Conference is an absolute slugfest. There are probably 12 to 13 teams that you could realistically see playing postseason basketball, meaning the plan. And Portland has to be one at this point. Has to be one of the 13. I think them having Brogdon is valuable for depth. Valuable for these guys to learn from him. And also, who knows? Maybe maybe they keep him around, but if they do trade him, valuable in that sense, too. Maybe get something from the Clippers. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see, especially if the James Harden situation doesn't work out. More on that yeah. later. Uh, I wrote about Derek White recently. Uh, I wrote an article called Don't Forget About Derek White because it feels like everyone has kind of just forgotten that Derek White exists. Because uh, The way I phrased it in the article um, <clears throat> was effectively about how Drew Holiday came in uh, and everyone forgot like i said espn's top 100 left away off the list providing the perfect example of how quickly people forget about things when a shiny object gets thrown in their face it's kind of what's happening with Derek white in my opinion um and also a phrase that drew holiday consumed all the attention because boston managed to replace the defensive presence of marcus smart while also adding a guy who shoots 40 percent 
they, they already had that on the roster. Like, like it's not like they, they didn't have that type of player on the roster anymore. They just added another one. Like Derek White's so good. And people are just forgetting about him and casting him aside because Drew Holiday's in town. And that's fine because Drew Holiday's a good player. But that doesn't mean people should forget about Derek White, too. Like, Jake Fisher told us in our last pod, and I transcribed it and used it in the article. Like, Boston traded two firsts and two key rotation players to get Drew Holiday. They value him. But that's not to mean they value Drew Holiday more than Derek White. They are in on Derek White. So, and also, I'm sorry. ILL, ill 617 from the comments. Oh, I love that guy. He's fire. He just shows up to the comments every pod just to ruin people's day. And I appreciate you. you. Yeah, I appreciate you. (laughs) You don't know ball. Uh, this take, don't know ball. Did you see What's this? What's the take? Uh, Grant's better than Derek White. Oh, I did see that take, and I Jeez. started laughing so hard. And some of the stuff you said, and he sent like a 300-word a reply, like, brother. Uh, I, like, I love he, it. I'm all for it. If he you're was in our ha- comments and quotes, you guys are going to war, respect. Okay, go ahead. Quotes. He was hardly some major contributor. Uh, mm-hmm. White was basically a guy who played every game and didn't make mistakes, but didn't give you much offensively. Uh, you in this he goes he averaged 11 to 12 points if your assessment of a player is based on how many points they average you don't watch basketball that, cause like <laughs> that's just you, you like ah uh, it got me so angry and i, I Jack's again, brain I, is now bleeding i love and appreciate you for watching the content never stop what you do because this is phenomenal content me being mad right now but to say oh you know he only averaged 11 points great average like fucking six what mm. do you mean like mm. like if that's gonna be your assessment use it the same and he's like Derek white doesn't guard bigger guys like grant yeah great doesn't mm. guard smaller guys like like that's just it's uh it got me so how quickly angry. your homies change up on you it let got this me be so a lesson mad. to all of you the way jack has turned his back on grant williams and then he was like so is maxi quickly beal conley Mer- I, I don't even know what he's saying like what made him better? I didn't fucking say. I think Derek this White's is in response than... to the top 100. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's better than some of the guys on the list. I'm not saying he's like a top 30 player. Maybe saying he's top 50 is egregious. But I stand by that he's better. He's closer to top 50 than off the list. And I don't think that's crazy. No, it's not that, that crazy. I think Derek White so, so much. He got recognition last year. All defensive team. That's nothing to sneeze at. He was a very solid contributor for the Celtics. We mentioned it already. Reliable shooter, about 13 points a game, and he's blocking shots like it's nobody's business. And that Philly game, he had three blocks. Pretty cool. Also, his last thing was, all I'm saying is one people doesn't make you, doesn't equate to like a good player. Like in, in like his argument was like, oh, he's only done it one season. <clears throat> uh, basketball Index tweeted, Derek White's perimeter isolation defense mm. over the years, their grades, 2019 A plus, 2020 A plus, 2021 A plus, 2022 A plus. This isn't one season. This is just one season of him doing it for a good team. Derek White was awesome in San Antonio during his time there, and that's why the Celtics gave up so much for him. They gave up a rotation player, a first round pick, and a protected swap or something. Good like, rotation like, player. Yeah, and a young player who who faded out, but like this guy good. that took a chance on. <clears throat> this isn't new for Derek White. Derek White put up 37 in the playoffs a few years ago. He's a damn good player. He's just doing it on a scale where he can be noticed now. And he's a top 100 player in the NBA. He, just like objectively. I'm sorry. And I, again, love and appreciate you. ILL. I couldn't let that stand. I, I love him. ILL. He's a, he's a beast. beast. He's in there he's every day going to war with somebody. That and I is respect the it. Kind of, if you do that, you're a fan of the HBTC podcast. It's just, I, it's what we do here. We breathe and dogs. I, I, I respect it. Look at Jack I do respect I. it. I do Two respect it. the most intimidating it. men you'll ever see. <laughs> and I do respect it, but I, I had to I had to combat you on that one. I couldn't let it stand. I but love it. Check. I I saw that and I was like, Jack is gonna be mad as hell. When and I love that. Grant too. And I love Grant too. That's the thing. Like I, I do love Grant, and, and it's it's tough for me to see something and go against Grant. But like, mm. come on. Well, Grant it's, did lose to Real Madrid. <clears throat> this is true. Fraud yeah. watch. Kind of sucks. Let's uh, maybe let's everybody that was hating on Grant was right. No. Let's check in with our email uh, and see what people had to say. We have some from RJ because uh, he's a legend. And of course, we have some from RJ. Um, he said, This makes me laugh. Maybe it's time. Uh, may- or excuse me, maybe it's just me, but this ad popped up on my Facebook feed and I almost did a sp- uh, spit take. Uh, they're selling <laughs> Calinari jerseys for 20 bucks off. Not even. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. 25. 
Mm. 24. 24. Yeah, tough dollars. Look. That's tough, look, especially because somebody uh, else is dotting this number now. So, uh, you know what the best is? Uh, I saw a Hayward t shirt in a very similar fashion come up on my feet. Oof. That's a tough look. Very tough look. Um, I almost bought it. It wasn't even marked down that much. That's the thing. It was like, it was like still like $25. That's tough. Maybe you should have. Reflections on the deep bench guys part two with three games in the bank and one uh, more on the guys behind Pritchard and Hazard. I th- still think his coach Missoula's circle of trash. trust. I think Cornette, Brissett, and Mikhailu have shown enough to be on the floor to, uh, to be the next three. Cornette with his knowledge of the system. Yep. Brissett with his Swiss army athleticism on both sides. Sure. See mm-hmm. with his offensive skills. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> I think their spots are less theirs to lose than someone further down the depth chart has to take it from them. Both Cornette and Sphere are on partially guaranteed deals. I think those will be picked up. Peyton is looking promising, but consistent playing time uh, his blocked by guard depth. There's a sentence that I think I would type. Uh, I think he'll get minutes, but based on more matchups where the C's need a tall ball handler, uh, another partially guaranteed deal, but unless he flames out in some fashion, Salt Lake's will probably keep around. Agree. Next comes Walsh, Stevens, and Gabriel. Of the three, I think Walsh will play, uh, will likely play the least due to physical maturity matter. Stevens more uh, to be favored over Gabriel right now, so Lamar's playing time would be a matter of can he contribute more than Cornetto or Brissett. Uh, while Gabriel has to display more playability than Stevens to move up. Yep, DJ Stewart might be competing against guys that aren't even on the roster. Yeah, while Scrubs injury opens up a path to the third two-way, the Celtics could look for late cuts to fill it. Uh, I get the feeling if he stays Boston, it would be because his camp practices are better than people's film. Sure. <laughs> Uh, last player to add to this list is Nemes Keda. While he's on a two-way contract, he's been getting minutes earlier in the games with guys higher in the rotation. Of all the backup bigs, he looks the most comfortable on offense so far. I don't see him forcing one of the full contract guys off the roster, but if his defense mm-hmm. progresses in Maine, he could be elevated to a regular contract in the event of an injury or trade that's all for now. Be well, RJ. I think he could bump Wayne Gabriel off the roster, to be honest, <clears throat> at this point. Yeah, I'm not convinced Wayne and Gabriel's sticking around. It's unfortunate. The highlights were fun to react to when we did that, but... Mm-hmm. The performance just has not been there throughout the preseason. Maybe he's better in practice, but maybe. Well, too bad that they don't pay him for practice, really. Yeah, a, you pay him to play. This is true. This is can't, true. I can't uh, stand by that. What else do we got? Six degrees of starting lineups. Morning, Jack and Sam. A phrase we are hearing about the Celtics is the team has six starters, which is true. Brown, Holiday, Horford, Porzingis, Tatum, White could all crack the lineup in the league. Yep. So let's play a game of why would these. Why would we start these five? Obviously, rest is a possibility, especially for Al, but there are particular teams where backcourt of Drew and D. White, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the hiccups, is preferred over a double big or front court. And for fun, kick the tires on all of the possibilities. Have fun. This is interesting. I don't think you'll see. Do you want to do this in the context of just closing lineups, just starting lineups, or like when you would play them? Like, how do you want to do this? Because this is an interesting like topic. Well, I think it's like starting you... lineups. <clears throat> okay. Well, in the case of starting lineups, the bottom two are injury uh, or rest. Yeah. You'll never see either Tatum or Brown out. Or even Porzingis for that matter. So the bottom three. Yeah. I think they're pretty safe. Um, unless it's like a... I'm trying to think of an example of when you might not want Porzingis in there, but with what we've seen, it's not like... If you want to go in a walking boot, if you want to go as switchable as possible, like if you really cannot play drop defense, you maybe need you're to switch the Warriors. Yeah, maybe you consider a Porzingis less lineup. Just say that's five times fast, Jesus. Um, but I think those three have shown that they are too good to bench, and I think Holiday could ride that line eventually. But for now, since we haven't seen as much of him, and he is so similar to Derek White, it makes it less easy to just discount it i think here the top lineup you see against big lineups because yeah i think you see the same thing for this where it's horford and, and not the two guards together except i i could see them going to holiday over Derek white if it's a more physical guard like maybe they'd rather drew holiday on Shea gildress alexander or you know john morant versus a trey young you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. like you put up white against quicker guys holiday against more physical guys um, sure. And I mean, this is the double guard is my preferred starting lineup. But if you're playing a Joel Embiid or Nicole Jokic, maybe you do want Horford out there. But this is my preferred starting lineup personally. So I, I think that's the breakdown. What do you? I'm do you so want? wiped on this question. I'm just like I'm gonna sit and see what Joe does because I I don't know. I I think it's this is a really to tough one to answer. Mm-hmm. The the only real answer I think is just matchup based. I think you kind of yeah. talked about that pretty well. Having Horford out there is going to be important if you're playing against a really dominant big guy, Embiid. <laughs> Jokic, even uh, perhaps Clint Capella would be good too. You want the exercise, keep him off the glass. He's Steven Adams. Yeah, Steven Adams. 
the real physical guys. Um, I really, really am out on Holiday coming off the bench. The more yeah, I, I think about like it, that. I'm just like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would they no. do that? You shouldn't. I don't think so. I, I would like to see him out there regardless of who is handling the ball for the other team. I don't care. Quick, strong. He can guard both. That's kind of the whole point. That being said, I also think White is so valuable to have out there because he's so versatile. He can be a focal point or he can be behind the curtain. It really doesn't matter. And he's still effective. Kind of in uh, correlation to what our man ILL said, he he was just solid and he didn't have to go above and beyond and he was still that effective. He was Until still he did. catching he the did. attention of someone mm-hmm. like you or the all NBA voters that put him on the defensive team. Mm-hmm. That's a real thing. That's important. Like you yeah. said, until he didn't have to game seven against Miami, he was the only one putting the ball in the basket because Tatum rolled his ankle. So yeah. I, I don't know, man, I hate this. Start six. <laughs> we'll see. It's a good problem to have. It's a I'll good question. It and it's a good problem to have for the Celtics. Uh, all right. Last thing from RJ. Forsberg and Carter chat morning guys I'm sure you're giving it a listen Celtics talk conversation between Chris Forsberg and Drew Carter is pretty awesome very relaxed and informative Carter seems fun without being forced uh, if there's a way to get him on the pod I'd love to hear his rat list among other things happy uh, when you and Gabriel Friday to all uh, PS Celtics.com updated Jordan Walsh with a real photo there we go mm. about time uh, I haven't gotten the chance to sit down and listen to this yet uh, mm-hmm. I will say though I spoke about it on the last pod Really enjoyed your Carter's first broadcast with the Celtics. So uh, maybe we will try to get him on the pod sometime soon. Maybe I'll shoot him a DM or talk to him at a game uh, sometime and see if he'd be willing. He seems like the type of guy who might be down. So uh, RJ we'll did see. put out the flyer. He did. RJ was looking out for us on Twitter. Uh, so we appreciate you, RJ. He's You're the legend. leader of the HBTC army. <laughs> he really is. We appreciate you, RJ. You're a beast. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that caps it off for the Celtics stuff today. Let's talk James Harden, Sam. Which I'm All sure right. you're thrilled about. So, uh, yeah. James Harden, still mad at Daryl Morey. He's not happy. He um, was asked about that today. He was asked if he had been able to mend his relationship with the man in charge. And he said, no, this is not <laughs> even about this situation. This is in life. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. He dramatic. said, when you lose trust in someone, it's like a marriage. You lose trust in someone. You know what I mean? It's pretty simple. Shams had a report on Harden today. Uh, oh, why'd you put it twice? Oh, he said he wants to retire. He wanted to retire a sixer. Mm. And the front office didn't have that in their future plans. Yeah. Hmm. So why'd you opt in? <laughs> Listen, I I understand that part of it. And I've said this a million times, and I don't want to go down the whole us fighting whether or not James. I'm not gonna. I'm not taking the sword out. Don't worry. <clears throat> okay. If I had to guess what happened and the reason he opted in, it is because these issues occurred before his opt in date. It was it was James Harden and the Sixers talking about a long term extension, which at mm-hmm. what, that point James Harden probably did want to be with the Sixers long term, uh, and because he did take what as minute or whatever it was is is under the under the table you know campering whatever took a pay cut last season for them to get tj tucker and daniel house which sure uh <clears throat> that happened probably with a little wink wink ha- you know handshake under the table we'll get you an extension next summer harden has in his defense he had a pretty good season like he was he had a good season for them he was good in the regular season he was up and down in the playoffs but he did win them a couple playoff games um mm. so he was fine and then it gets to this year, and the Sixers, if I had to guess, were like, "Yeah, psych. We're not. We're not going to do that. Sorry, buddy." Because uh, the playoffs. Or, yeah, he said he that. didn't hear from them much. I didn't put this part in here. I think. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, it did. Okay, so I'll I'll bounce back to this. Harden, who called Maury a liar during an event in China in August, said the communication between him and the team, after being constant for years, ended when Philadelphia's playoff run was over. Now, I wonder if that has anything to do with him disappearing in game six and game seven. And they're like, wow, this guy is just not reliable. Uh, He went on and said, me and the front office had a very, very good relationship for a decade, meaning Maury. There was a constant communication, you know what I mean? And there was no communication once we lost. So he's not thrilled about that. I'm sure Daryl Maury is not thrilled that he was uh, Houdini in those last two closeout games against the Celtics where it felt like they had the Celtics. 
if they got anything from Harden in game six, they probably would have outed the Celtics, but now the problem. Game seven was a different story. It was just a whomping, but that game six was a huge missed opportunity from Philly, and he was a part of that. He had a bunch of turnovers, didn't mm-hmm. shoot well, wasn't productive, wasn't engaged, but respect. He still plans to play. Like I said, I can control what I can control. I take it one day at a time and focus on every day as a new day. My plan is to play basketball. Yes, for sure. Hmm. Different, and, uh, different tone. Again, just play devil's advocate. There were some games where Harden was really good, and then maybe his co-stars weren't very good. So maybe, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's two sides to every story. And I, I think when he did opt in, since you mentioned it, like, it was probably him saying, all right, you guys clearly don't want to deal with me. I don't want to be here. I, I'll opt in, and you can trade me, or I can just dip. Uh, or maybe he was like, I'm opting in, trade me. And they were like, okay. Yeah. And then they didn't, whatever. It was a mess from there. Um, I did hear Tyrese Maxey on the pod today, uh, JJ Reddick pod. And maybe he was just saying this, although I don't think he would have been this in depth and like highly praising James Harden if it wasn't somewhat true. He was like, yeah, James has come to camp and it's been like good. Like he's talking to the rookies. He's helping mentor people. Like a- everything, like basically saying like, yeah, everything going on with that stuff has not translated. Like he's just been normal and it's been good camp so far. The vibes are high. So like to hear that, at least it's like you said, respect, I guess for him to handling it in a, in a more professional manner than he did with Brooklyn and or Houston, uh, or at least uh, on the in outside looking in right now, but we'll see. It's just, it's so weird to see as much as you respect it. It is hard to imagine you consistently playing for a franchise when you are so out on the person running it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, oh, I'm yeah, not, no, no, I get it. I'm not suggesting Harden like completely screw the team because like you have to direct your anger. It's like when you yell at the, the, what's the good analogy for it? It's like when you yell at the retail worker for the prices, right? Like it's not, they didn't fucking set okay. the prices. So like, he, why would he punish his teammates for a problem he has with the, with the front yes. office? But at the same time, you're still repping the organization. So how long are you going to let that stand versus when it, when it gets in the way of your teammates? It's just such an ugly situation now. So I suppose uh, you know. if, if it's about an extension, I just don't know like how realistically he felt about that. Like, really? You think they're going to – how much money did he want? Like, you can't justify – if you're the Sixers, you can't justify paying him upwards of what? 40 million as he continues well, to age. I agree. And I get that from their perspective. And, and they from, promised it though. Exactly. Apparently. From Harden's perspective, you're like, well, if you pro like hypothetically, if they promised it the year before and you, and then they double back, then obviously you're gonna be fucking mad regardless. So yeah, you're like, okay, it is um, I don't know. Just weird. Sure, man. I hope they implode. <laughs> Uh, I was, we were talking to John Corrales at practice today and he said, you know what? There's not a better team it could happen to. So <laughs> why not? Maybe the Lakers. Uh, Maybe the Lakers. Right now. It's fine. Uh, speaking of James Harden, though, refer to the power. Apparently, uh, apparently the Clippers wanted Drew Holiday over James Harden. ESPN's mm. uh, Adrian Wojnarowski. That was bad. Woj. Uh, said on to NBA say. today. I know <laughs> it's bad, though. Said on NBA Today, Clippers were much more aggressive, quote, in their pursuit of Drew Holiday and offered, quote, more than to the Portland Trailblazers than they had been willing to for James Harden to this point. Fair. Fair mm-hmm. assessment of talent. I think this Harden thing, really, really, not this Harden thing, this Clippers take on Harden speaks to why Philly did not want to pay him. If you're Philly... And I I get it. Like the gesture was made. The promise might have been made, whatever. And I I don't really know how I should feel about that. But whatever. Maybe just don't promise people things. Don't be stupid. Um, You cannot pay a guy that much money when you literally cannot let get anybody to trade for him. Nobody wants him. If you're hardened, you have to like see that and be like, all right, well, like maybe it's partially on me. Even though I don't know how much of his fault it is that teams don't want to go get him, because purely from like an age standpoint and like he's getting old, we don't want to pay him standpoint, that's not really his fault. Because that's my main take is like Harden's what, 34, 35, maybe a little younger? Uh... He's probably 33 because him and Holiday were drafted the same year. But, anyways, people are like, we don't want to pay, pay him. 34. Okay. <laughs> He wants, what, three or four more years? You want to pay him $40 million when he's 38? If you're hard and you want that when you're 38, but nobody wants to pay you that. So it's very mm-hmm. difficult to find a trade partner for you. It's hard. Yeah, 
I agree. And talking to circle, I really didn't say anything, but <laughs> I will say not too much. To and say. Keith Smith and, and Trevor Lane, the front office show, have brought this up multiple times. Yes, that's tough, but purely on the trade thing, if you're the Clippers, and Keith has said this a million times on the show, and Terrence Mann is the only reason you're not getting the steal done. Come on, like like I, Terrence Mann's great, sure. and I know you like Terrence Mann. I know like, I like Terrence Mann. But if the difference between James Harden being there and not is Terrence Mann and a first and a pick swap and salary versus salary and two firsts, just do the fucking trade. Like, get it done. Yeah. Like, get it done before training camp. Get Like, Terrence Mann's a fine player, but he, you'd still rather have James Harden. Like, not even close. Just do it. Just get the deal over with. Just just send him a first and a swap and Terrence Mann and whatever salary you need to. And let's move, all move on with our lives. So we don't have to talk about James Harden anymore, just like we don't have to talk about Dame anymore. It's, it's nice that he's somewhere else now. <clears throat> Send him. Well, if you're at this point, you're Daryl Morey. Maybe you spite him. You just go all in. <laughs> you can't because it's not the Wait, same you as can. Portland. You absolutely it's not the can. Same, it's not the same as Portland because Philly actually needs to compete because then you're risking. Yeah, they do. And, they do. and then you're missing they off Maxi. <clears throat> you can't do that. That would you be fire that. if he was like, all right, like mm, Detroit. Come here. Mm. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but Zion Williamson is the next thing we're talking about. And you no, put this not. on here. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> it is, though, because you put it on here and this is the direction you want to take it. So I'm going to let you lead this, okay. this charge here, please. So uh, for quite some time now, Zion Williamson has not been able to get on the court. He's dealt with numerous injuries, um, probably partly too largely caused by his weight he was very out of shape going into last season he missed a lot of time i will say pelicans when he played were very good to his credit he has some competition memphis grizzlies big man kenneth lofton jr showed up to training camp over 300 pounds according to chris vernon last year he was only 275 pounds now if you're familiar with kenneth lofton jr he already looked like kind of big. Like, you know who he is. You just might not know his name. You'll be like, oh, yeah, that guy. I'm mm. surprised that uh, he's he's going up and not down, to be honest with you. When you come into the NBA and everyone kind of recognizes you because you're fat or bigger, it's time to, like, shed, shed the pounds. You don't really need to get bigger. You need, you need to lose weight. Especially he's only, what, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and he's a big man. He needs to be able to take advantage of some quickness instead of just just packing on the pounds. 300 pounds is a lot, dude. If you're going to be a pro athlete. I mean, just look at Zion. Look uh, at him. Yeah. <clears throat> Very tough. And, uh, <laughs> six, seven, 300 pounds is nuts. And hey, I am not, <laughs> I'm not in <laughs> shape myself. I'm not one to talk. But like, he's a, Kenneth Lofton is a big boy. He's always been a big boy. <laughs> he bullied the hell out of Wemby back in back in the day. Bullied him. Yeah, that's what it is. Wemby came in the league. He was like, "Well, I got to get back to my prime, my peak. I have to prepare for him." And he, he got stronger. So actually, respect. <clears throat> no, <laughs> no, no. Maybe not respect. Maybe get in a little bit of shape there, Guinea. Uh, that is crazy. <clears throat> He's competing with his eye on, as you uh, as you like to put it. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, last thing and another thing you put on here, so I'm going to let you lead it off because I was a practice today. Load yes. management. So hit me. Load management. <clears throat> finish. Now? Yeah. It's question mark. Bad. So we talked about load management quite a bit. We talked about it way back. I want to say in April, May, maybe when Paul George put out his podcast, he was talking about it and he was saying, or maybe it was not his podcast. It was the Reddick pod. I think he made an appearance on the Reddick pod. He talked about load management with JJ and he was like, listen, the Clippers are the ones enforcing the load management. I personally don't even like load management. And he went back and detailed how it was when he played with the Pacers, where, like, I don't know, 10 years ago now, they were trotting teams out there for back-to-back-to-backs. They did not care a lick about fatigue, wear and tear. It didn't matter. And guys were playing far more games. Now they're dialing it back. They're giving guys excuses to sit out. or teams more so excuses to rest guys that it's having a negative effect and the league has had enough. So the athletic published an article today or yesterday recently, 
depending on when you're listening to this, that load management is no longer something with data backing it. Sam Amick and Joe Varden wrote, a top NBA official said teams general practice of resting players to prevent future injury and extend careers, commonly known as load management, a term ingrained in the lexicon of the sport over the past several years as some of the biggest stars miss huge amounts of games, is no longer supported by scientific data. There's a lot of stuff in this article from Joe Dumars, who is a spokesperson for the NBA now, pretty much. And they a lot of talk about the all-star game. Like the the angles in this article where the NBA is pushing is kind of weird. I know they put in the new rules with the new CBA, so they're trying to be like, listen, we did that because we know this is BS. But it kind of also sounds like the NBA is just trying to like make more money. So I'm actually like somewhat skeptical about this, even though I have been a major, major supporter of getting rid of load management because I understand like I'm a runner. If I don't run, if I start taking days off running, my body is going to have a more difficult time running. Yes, my body is going to get tired and it needs rest, but you should not take away from the normal amount of activity. So for these guys, the normal activity is playing games. Don't just sit them out because then they play a game and their body's not ready for it. But the weird like money angle where they're talking about TV deals and stuff in this article is a bit like alarm going off. Yeah, I want to see the data. You fucking this whole article is like, oh yeah, data support. Show what show, mm-hmm. show, show us the data. Like, what what data did you take? Let's see what you got. Because like, why would I believe? Like, and I I do agree with the idea of the more they play, the more their bodies are used to that. The more it will put probably less of a strain because they're so used to the constant playing. Let's see the data. Like you just you know we collect the data. This new data. This data. This, show it. Like mm-hmm. let's see it. You had a whole article and you didn't show yeah, us the data. See, like, what buddy. are we doing? So. I agree, and I, I hope we do see less uh, load management. It'd be good for the game. It would be better for us. I truthfully just think it's stupid. Like, load management has forever been stupid. You just can't mm-hmm. expect these guys to just sit there and wait, gla- break glass in case of emergency type thing. Not everybody could be Peyton Pritchard. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And again, I said it last time we talked about it. It's usually not the players. It's usually the teams, like, forcing Correct. these guys to rest, which <clears throat> sucks. But And it sucks yeah. for the players because they get a bad rap. Yes. I mean, in this article, literally, they name drop Kawhi, and they're like, he was literally the poster child of this, which he is. Mm-hmm. But it might not necessarily be his fault, even though it kind of was because the exit from San Antonio was weird, and they were using that as a reason for not playing him, and he didn't want to play. And I don't know. Go watch the beef history uh, from SB Nation mm-hmm. on there. We'll talk I agree. That. I agree. All right. You want to play who we play for? Yes. I actually okay. forgot about this. Like, every <laughs> time I forget about it. I've run out of like good free agents, so I'm going to exhibit nines and tens. However, they will be players you have heard of, so they won't okay. be like. So All they right. will be. Mm. But that's what we're we're getting down to it here. Rodney McGruder, you know him. You know the player. I'm aware of him. He used to play for Miami. Mm-hmm. Now, who does he play for? Oh boy, tis the oh question. Boy. He is on an exhibit nine, hmm. or ten. One of the two. I don't know which one, but he's he's on that type of deal. Is he on the nets? Like, he's not. I'll give you a clue. Uh, he was once trash talked by a player on his new team, saying this guy's going to be out of league soon. <laughs> and now he's playing with him. <laughs> I'm trying to think of trash talkers. That's what I'm doing. It's not somebody you'd think of. So I, really, I'll, I'll, I'll play the clip. Is it Phoenix? Um, mm-mm, close, kind of. Western Conference team. Uh, Western it, Conference team. Is it Utah? Nope, it's a good team. That's what I said. It's close. I'll play it. We'll play the clip. We'll spoil it yeah, here. Play, play it. Uh, that's so Damian Lee. Plays, what, what, what's going on Jordan Poole. Is he on the Warriors? <laughs> he is on the Warriors. <laughs> Who said that? Steph Curry? <laughs> Clay Thompson. Oh, no. Yeah, they got into beef during the game, and Clay was just like, I don't know what he's mad about. This guy's probably at the league soon. Get me mad about Joke's that. Joke's on Clay. He might be at the league soon. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, After that playoffs that was against fun. the Lakers, he was terrible. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, Warriors for him. Kevin Knox, Sam, who he played for? Kevin Knox was on the Pistons. He's no longer on the Pistons. Mm. He wasn't on the Pistons last year. He wasn't? Uh, if he was, he got traded. He did not finish last season with the. Pistons. Oh, he finished with Portland. My bad. Yep, my bad. Mm-hmm. He was part of the Wiseman deal. I know. Mm-hmm. Who you play for? Uh, I don't 
Portland didn't bring him back, did he? It did they? They did. He did. <clears throat> Exhibit nine. Yeah. I, I there's not much left. I'm slim pickets. I got to hit something. It's okay. Uh, Romeo Langford, former Celtic, who he played for. He got picked up. Mm-hmm. Exhibit ten or nine. <sighs> The hell did I see this? I did see it. It's because we talked about it on the pod. I might have. Yeah, I might have. This is so we bad. Did. We talked about it. How did he end up? What conference? West. West? Is he on the Spurs still? Nope. Not, no. Not which team picked him up. Who picked him up? Who wanted Lankford? <laughs> Danny. Utah. Danny, yes. Danny I wanted Lankford. Yep. <laughs> This is so bad. I literally wrote Danny an article Wong? that Danny picked him up, and I was like, yep. it makes sense. He drafted him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So All right, bad. two more. Mac McClung, who he played. Mac for. McClung, Orlando. Yes, correct. <clears throat> Last one, potential Celtics target from the summer. On an exhibit 9 or 10 now, Jalen Noel, who he played for. He's on an exhibit 9. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, didn't get a Is he still team. in Minnesota? He is not. Different team got him. A team where he could actually play some decent minutes for them, <clears throat> in my yeah, opinion. Sunk. No, no. no. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Is it is it Phoenix? No, it, that is the correct division. Pacific yeah. Division. The Clippers? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I'm not going to give you more clues. I'm, no, you got you got the to Kings? guess. Through. Yeah, <laughs> he's on the Kings. Jalen Noel joined the Kings. Uh, I think he played pretty well in their first preseason game, too. But that can wrap up who he played for. Um, let's get into the rat list now, then. Let's let's, let's jump in. Sam, I have a video that I, I was scrolling, admittedly, while we were talking. Uh, and I was just I was, you know, on Twitter a little bit. And I just I found this video. And I thought it was <laughs> funny as shit. So I'm just going to share. It's nothing to do with basketball. It's just like okay. it popped up in my timeline. And I just thought it was funny. Uh, we can see it. I'll move the mat. Um, All right. Just... <laughs> Are those ants? They drop tar- ants on him. It's a tarantula. <laughs> I just. I I'd be mad as hell if they dropped a tarantula on me. Can you look even at like, stomp look a tarantula? At, look how big it is. Look how that big thing's bigger thing than him. Oh that kid's God. gonna be traumatized. Look! Look at that thing. Look at this. Also, not for oh. nothing, what are you doing with a tarantula around a kid like that? I've always been out on like the reptile people that they, uh, they bring the well, like the snakes and stuff to yeah. schools. Yeah, 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 the reptiles, reptiles. Out reptiles. on that. I was in like sixth grade and they did that. I went and hit in the bathroom. No shame. Yep. I hate snakes. Yeah, don't out do on that. bugs it's too. Terrible. I don't really uh, bugs, snakes, all that stuff. Not not a fan. Not in just don't need watch it. His, watch his face change from <laughs> this is the point of realization. And then it is pure. <laughs> Little kids are kind of funny though. <laughs> Because it does, it does usually take, it usually takes them a minute to uh to figure out something's wrong. Like they'll fall and then they'll have that little grace period where they don't know they're hurt yet, and then they start wailing. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone can relate to that though. Like everyone would turn into a little kid. All right, if we're gonna do, I saw this on Twitter talk. I saw perhaps the greatest post of all time on Twitter today. Please. So. I uh, was scrolling through, and I'm going to send this to you because I want you to react to it before I drop what it is. And I see a quote Mm. tweet of an article from Men's Health. Now, I have sent this to you on Twitter. And it says, it says, hot girl summer is over. It is now time for small penis fall. And that might be the hardest I think I've ever laughed at something I saw like on like my Twitter timeline. And there's a whole article about it. And I read it and apparently like some girl just tweeted it and everyone was like, yeah, I agree. Like shout out to the fellas. Is it, is that the new short Kings? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about it, man. Oh my God. That's... I froze. I'm back. I can't <laughs> no that was me i was sitting here doing the show sheet i was looking for new like stories and i was like well there's one uh, but this I is two hear. years old the article <clears throat> that's nuts they just Literally. whipped it out for uh the new the new fall <clears throat> that's that's something special man that's that's next level Respect. wow yeah <laughs> yeah why not hey <laughs> that's uh <clears throat> <laughs> I don't I don't have any comment. <laughs> well the worst is when uh like you like do sports and stuff. 
Because then, like, your body's programmed to be like, well, this thing is going to get in the way, so we're just going to make it real small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Rat list time. We've Please. arrived. Do you have anything? Uh, you said you're going to wing it. Just traffic today. It's just annoying. Like People just don't fucking know how to drive. Ooh, it I pisses me know. off. Like, <clears throat> I'm driving home. I'm weaving it out, whatever. And people love to just be the worst, right? And what I mean by that, I'm on the highway. And you know when you're in that awkward situation where you can't really speed enough, speed up enough for a car to let them come in because they're merging yes. and you have to get off soon. Correct. But you also, you know, so you're kind of forced to at least slow down a little just so you don't fucking cause an accident, right? It sucks. If you're merging and you see them slowing down, get in the fucking lane. Don't spend your whole yeah, time some respect. driving in the right. Get in, right? Because then we're just in this awkward like standout. And then somebody came in from the left lane and cut me off that way. Take the entrance, or I'm just not gonna let them go next time. Next time they hesitate, I'm just gonna try to pass them and figure it out. Yeah, just yeah. oh my god, people need to be I think more decisive. You need like uh, like you hit a button and you have like a pinball mm -hmm. flap, but a really big one that comes out the side of your car and just. Flips you ever them. seen uh the Minions movie? No. Mm. I will show you exactly what it is. Uh, hold up. So in the Minions movie, Gru, uh, or no, have you seen Despicable Me? Sorry, that's what I meant. It's, it's I've Despicable seen Despicable Me. once when I was like 11, 12, like that age, whenever it came out, like around then. It was on Red sure. Box. Sure. There's a scene in Despicable Me, um, which I aspire to be. It just, All right. Put it clearly. This is uh, <clears throat> this is him. Can you take Matt off the screen while no, I put I'm this up? It. I literally just sat up to do it. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, so this in Despicable Me. We're back. Uh, is his. Yep. <laughs> everybody should have. Well, not everybody. We should have one of these. <laughs> yeah. That is literally how it should go when people drive poorly. You just turn into that. And then there's this. Oh, there's this. Okay. There's big uh, asshole car. Dude yep. hanging out. And then... Uh... I can't believe Brad got away again. How is this possible? How? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> Bob's... Uh, that's what I need. That's what we need on the roads. Uh, so I thought that was relevant. So shout out. Uh, this was Speaking cool. of the roads, <clears throat> today I may have seen the most inconvenient accident I've ever seen. Now, every now and then I'll make the joke, and I, I hesitate to do it because people may get upset, is uh, you have to be a real prick to get in an accident like in rush hour. <laughs> like that is the most inconsiderate time you could ever get into a car accident because everybody's on the road. So you really slow everyone down. Now, today, the rush hour car accident may have been outdone. Oh, okay. Today they were doing road work. Now they were doing road work, but not road work. They were doing the trimming the trees on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. But it is was this like, a highway or is this just like a no, no, no. This road. is like the the regular roads. Sure. Now the 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 branches are hanging over some wires, so whatever they're cutting them off, so they they get rid of them, so nothing bad happens, which is fine. However, somebody got in an accident right next to where that was happening. Ooh, so and they yeah. did it right in the middle of the road. So I'm at a, a red light an intersection and I see a ton of traffic. I'm like, what the hell is going on? The two cars have collided, leaving about a lane between the road work and the accident in the middle of the road. Nothing serious, but enough to where everyone had to stop and look. Yep. That's a disaster. They were probably trying to get around the fucking tree cutter. And they, my mom thought they were rubbernecking looking mm. at it. They're like, what are they doing? Probably <laughs> idiots. Yeah. That's the worst kind of people. You hate it. Um, what else do I got? There's nothing too bad that's gone on. We've only it's only been a day since we recorded yeah. this. So <clears throat> nothing really has happened. Uh I don't know. Just yeah, nothing really All right. Al Horford taking I forever and uh taking too long to get us there. And then uh, so <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Prior to the uh recording today. I decided mm -hmm. I want to treat myself. I went to go get a donut. Now I go to the donut shop that I like very much. They're very good vanilla frosted donuts with sprinkles. Right. Also get a sure. coffee. I walk in the door. Now there are people ahead of me. I have never seen anybody take this long to complete an order. 
to finish like, asking all of okay. the questions that they had. Mm. She must have been ordering some sandwich, and she has her kid with her who's probably like mid teens. Yeah. And she's asking about the mustard they have on the sandwich. She's like, well, do you have spicy mustard? And they're like, well, we have honey mustard. We don't have actual mustard. She's like, you don't have mustard. They're like, no, we don't have mustard. This is a conversation that took far too long. Then she's like, well, do you have horseradish? And they're like, I don't know. She's asking questions on every single item that she's interested in eating or ordering. Yeah. Now, there could have been an allergy, but usually allergies don't start at like mustard. It's usually like, do you have peanut butter in this thing? That's the thing. They took so long that somebody else came, helped me, took my order, got my coffee ready, and got me my donut before this person had paid. It was the most unreal display of just filibustering at the register. I'd at never that point, seen anything like it. Yeah. At that point, go to the fucking grocery store, get exactly what you want, and go fucking make it yourself. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. I, I was mad that like I didn't even get like the cool like after they leave moment with like the workers, you're like, get a load of that person. They're yeah, all, I do that too. All, That's like, fun. Love you. Yeah. That's a good one. That happened to me at McDonald's once. Uh, this had to have been like over a year ago, maybe two years ago. <clears throat> I was in a McDonald's and I, the drive through line was long. So I went in, right? And I'm understanding that the drive through line is long and I'm going to wait inside too. But I'm just like, you know what? Let me not have to wait in my car and have to be, you know, add, I'll just go inside. It'll be easier. <clears throat> or actually, I had a pickup order. That's why I had a pickup order. Uh, so I go in, I tell them and they're like, sorry, it's not ready. We're really busy. And of course, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. I understand. That's fine. Another guy comes in for his pickup. A woman comes in. She gets it. She's, you can tell she's in the same situation as me. She's mad, but she's still waiting, but I, I'm not yeah. mad. I'm like, whatever <clears throat> dude comes in, starts screaming. He's like, ah, I know. he's like, can I, can I get my, uh, <clears throat> well, he's like, he orders. He's like, can I get fries and this and this? And then uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And somebody comes up to help him, but the worker takes the gloves off or something or like something where it'd be like contamination and they can't like touch the food and then touch the register and then go back. And so the manager's like, no, no, you can't help him. Like you, you have your gloves on, like probably like training a new guy. Cause it was a kid. Yep. And the guy goes to the manager. He goes, what the fuck? He, he, he can't fucking help me. What do you mean? He can't fucking help me. There's like fucking 10 of you back there. And she's like, it's just policy. I'm sorry. And he just starts screaming. He goes, I know the Smiths that own this fucking McDonald's. I'm like, wow, we're going with that, buddy. We're going with the I know the owners. This is a yeah. McDonald's. Do you know fucking Mr. McDonald? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Have you ever seen the founder? You don't know that guy. You don't know Michael Keaton's character, <laughs> the founder. He's like, I'm going to go call the police or something or that. I'm like, brother. Yeah your fries are going to take five minutes and I grab the thing and they apologize. And I, I like, I had that moment and I, I get my food finally. And I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck was wrong with that guy? And they start laughing and they were, yeah, like, they're all like that guy's meals free. now. Like, what are we doing? Like, you see, there's a huge line at the register. You see that there's a million people working and this guy clearly wasn't supposed to help yet because he's doing stuff out like other stuff. What's the point of being a jackass? It's fucking McDonald's. Mm. Get over yourself. Go to a fucking yeah, steakhouse. Also just go to another drink. McDonald's. There's like a yeah. zillion McDonald's. Uh, he's an asshole. He's the just, just go down the street. I'm sure there's a McDonald's yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So that was. Uh, I went to a guy. rage room yesterday for the first time. Definitely uh. mistimed it. Yeah. Could use it a different way. <laughs> uh, but going to a rage room, not a terrible experience, but definitely not worth the money. How much we had to be done in there smashing all the shit they gave you in like five minutes. Really? Yeah. How much was it? If you don't mind. It's like it was like 60 bucks. That's not good value for you. No, not good value. That sucks. (laughs) That's that's a whole new video game for 60 bucks. Yeah. No, last you I don't know. I could pull up how many days I played I had on uh pick game, whatever. Spider Man? (laughs) Spider Man, dude. Got we're recording this on Friday. We got one week. One week. I've been waiting five years for Spider Man. Still not here yet. Maybe I'll play. Maybe I have to break it out. You, I, I get, want I'd have homework. to get a PS5. Homework for Jack. Yeah. Download Spider Man to your computer because you can get the, the first game, you can get it on your computer. Okay. So download it, change your life. If it's not too many gigabytes, I will. I have to I the gigabytes know, are gigabytes huge. Off the, yeah, off the I've got to consider it. That's all I got for us. I don't have anything else. You got anything? Just sitting here thinking about Spider Man. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> well, let's close there. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Couple like uh, what's the word? Couple laundry list. What's what's the word when you like? 
like going over things that are important. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm gibberish. Laundry list, uh, to do list. Uh, no, it's like a, a couple. Like I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna talk about items. housekeeping banger. A couple housekeeping items for mm. the pod. Next playback is scheduled, so if you go to playback, you will see the correct uh, logo. Uh, what uh, I'm thumbnail. I'm losing my fucking mind. You'll see the next thumbnail with the Hornets on it. We were uh, gonna be live for the Celtics Hornets preseason game on the 19th, uh, which is a Thursday, with a guest hanging out like Manning Cast. Shout out to the guest who we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about closer to the date when we confirm it, but we'll see, see you there with a the guest. So come hang out that day and follow the playback. It's just playback.tv slash how about them Celtics. <clears throat> follow it. Join 31 others right now. And maybe more of you. Um, 31. We've got more. We, got we more. have. We, we've slowly gone we up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Sam and I are going to try our best to do more guest stuff. We just had Jake Fisher on might try to do a guest a week or, or a guest every two weeks. We're going to try, try to bring more people into the How About Them Celtics universe, see, see if we can get people to talk to us, talk to you, have a good time, uh, Celtics people, NBA people in general. But we're going to have a good season. Thank you very much for 1,500 subscribers. I know I mentioned it last mm. time, but we've surpassed it since then, and we appreciate the support greatly. So thank you all for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Join 1,500-plus others. Uh, and leave us reviews, comments, ratings on Spotify and Apple. That actually helps a lot more than you realize. And leave a comment, most importantly, especially ILL617. I still love you. I mm, promise. We goat. appreciate you. I'll let Sam take it out. Yes. Thank you very much for watching or listening, whichever it may be. This is a full-length pod. You can find us on the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell because we are putting up the daily content. You don't want to miss any of it. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple. Like Jack said, make sure make sure you leave a five-star review. Say something nice. Uh, social media, at How About Them Seas. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Just the name of the podcast. You can find Jack on Twitter, at Jack's Money NBA. You can find me on Twitter, at Samuel France NBA. It's it for us. Bye. Jack,